This is part of a video tutorial series on experimental typography. So today we're going to talk about text to points in P5JS. So, so first let's, let's take a look at what the basic idea of text to points. Um, so if you look at this word pi that I have drawn in P5JS, um, you'll see that there is an outline of circles that I have created around the text. And, and each of the circle has a X and a Y coordinate position. One caveat is that you have to use the open type font. Um, it, it stands for shorthand OTF. And I'll, I'll guide you through how to upload that and, and how to use that. Um, another way to think about text to point is is thinking about that game um, from childhood that a lot of people have played um, that's that's I think it's called connect the dots game and essentially it's this idea that you know you would you get a, a kind of like a book with um, like a ton of numbers that sort of like illustrate an outline of, of a rabbit or flower an object and and a kid would just have to connect the dots based on the, the order of the number to reveal the image. Um, text to point actually work in very sim uh, very similar logic. So let's get to our P5JS web editor and, and start creating a text to point piece. So, so the first thing you have to do is uploading an OTF font. Um, you, can, you can find a lot of them online and you can download them. And you can also see in the comment section that I'm going to um, provide a link where you can you can download the one that I'm using. So the way to, uh, to upload a font is going to sketch and go to add file. And you'll see this interface popping up with this like white box on, on the bottom that says drop files here. So I'm just going to go to my desktop and and drag and drop my OTF file. Um, it's not always super obvious when, when the upload is done. And, and just so you know, you don't have to add a name for your file up here. Like once you dra drag and drop it in, and when you go to the left hand side and open that menu bar over here and see your file in the sketch files, you're done. So I can close this window now. And, um, I see that once I uploaded my file, it generated this like super long name for my file. So that's not very useful for us. Um, so we want to rename that. So if you click on that tiny little button there and click rename, I'm just going to name it grotesque.otf. Great. Now we have a short and straightforward name and it's easier to work with. All right. So in order to load our OTF font into P5JS, we have to use a function called preload. So you would literally type function preload and open and closing curly brackets. So, so what preload does is that it, it makes sure that, you know, your font file or your image or your sound files get loaded into your program before the rest of the program is executed. So, so that is super useful because, um, you might have seen websites where, where like upon entering the website, you see like, you know, the times new Romans font before you see like the actual intended font. And, and that's, that's an effect of, you know, not, not having something like preload and not preloading and making sure that the files are in place before it, the website gets loaded. All right. So, so after having creating a, a preload function, we have to create a, a global variable to, to hold the font file. So, so I'm going to say let grow task. And inside preload, I would simply put grotesque equals load font and quotation mark grotesque oh, dot OTF. Okay, so, so this line right here is directly referring to the path of your files. So, so if you 
decide to like create a folder in here which is possible um, and put your fun file in there you would you would add you know in front of your text something like assets backward slash grotesque in this case we're just going to go straightforward grotesque.otf and and after that um, you want to also tell the program to use grotesque as your de default font so so let's do that in setup um, and the syntax is text font and you'll simply put grotesque great so now if we go into draw and create a piece of text i'll say hi and width divided by two and height divided by two and we can play and there it is there's our high written in the grotesque font um, it's hard to see now so we can we can also change the text size here let me make it like 60 and play again okay great so so um, now let's get into the exciting part the text to points part and I'm gonna pull up the p5 js um, see reference and um, you will have to go under typography and under p5 font and here you go this is the the method text to points and that's what we want so if you look at the the, the basic description um, in our reference it says computes an array of points following the path for a specific text. Um, the syntax for that is text to points. There are four basic required parameters. The first parameter is the string, the words we wanna put on screen. The second parameter is X position, third parameter, the Y position, and the font size. And there's something called optional, you know, uh, things that, that I'll, I'll return back to. But let's focus on the first four parameters first. So so once let's let's get back to our text editor and and let's create let, let's, let's use the text to point method. Um, so so in order to do that, we have to create an array um, variable to to hold the array of points that text to point will create for us so I'm going to say here in setup let high array equals grotesque dot text to points and remember the first parameter is high and second parameter is x and y so i'm gonna say um, what did i use here with divided by two and height divided by two and the third parameter is the text size so since we have the text size here um, i can simply put in 60 or i can create a variable i think i'm gonna do that so i'll say let um, font size is 60 and i'll replace this number to font size font size great so so if we play now um, nothing is going to happen on the screen and and the reason is because what this line does is that I'm gonna close this here what this line does is that it creates an array of points for us and and like now we can use those points to draw anything but we haven't used it yet so, so how can I show you those those points that has been drawn for us? We can try to use print. Um, so I'm gonna do print high array and hit play. And you'll see like this like kind of weird looking message popping up in the bottom. Um, that it looks like there is the syntax for an array and inside of it, there's a ton of objects. Okay, that's interesting. Um, in order to like see, look deeper, look deeper into what's inside the object, uh, we can use the help of a, a web uh, debugging console. So I'm using Chrome and in Chrome, you can go to view and developer and JavaScript console. 
and there, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so we have an array and it looked like there are 28 different objects inside the array. And when I open it, wow, so there's like a whole index from zero to 27, right? And it adds up to 28 objects showing us like, yeah, like the, the details of each object. So, so now I can see that, oh, within every object, there is a X value, the X position, there's a Y position of, of the specific point that's surrounding the outline of high and and there's an alpha value which which basically indicates the angle um, of, of the of the point and we, we don't have to work with that and we can ignore that for now so I'm gonna close this that's pretty cool um, and now we can think about how how we can use it so I'm going to go into draw and here I'm going to create a for loop. So I would say for let i equals zero i smaller than high array dot length i plus plus. And, and from here I can draw anything right anything i take an x and y value i can essentially take um the the text text to point like you know array of x and y and, and insert it into here so for for instance i can do an ellipse and i can say high array um square bracket i dot x so so that let us access into Every, every individual object because we're using a for loop and also the individual objects x using like the dot operator. So like that and, and then we put, put a y version of it, dot y, and I'm gonna just say 10, 10 for, for the width and height. Ooh. So, so here, here's an issue that we have, right? Um, I declared the, the high array variable inside of setup. So inside my draw, like it doesn't recognize an high array because it's not a global variable. And, and so let's, let's turn it into a global variable. So I'm gonna put this up here and say let high array. And from here, change it to high array. Great. So, so once I fix that, this shows up. Um, our circle is a little too big for our text. So I'm going to come up here and adjust our text to 100 and see if it looks better like that. I think it can be even bigger. Oh, great. So, so there you go. Um, we, we just basically took out like all the different X and Y points. Um, from text to points and displayed it on the screen using an ellipse. So, so this is nice. Um, there are other ways, other shapes that we can use to draw this, right? So, so here I'm going to teach you a couple other tricks. Um, so let's see. Um, the first thing I want to show is, is maybe like changing the resolution. So, so here, here we have like all these different dots. Some of it, it looks a little crowded to me on the screen. So what if I want to reduce or increase the amount of dots that's surrounding the outline? Well, there's actually a way to do that. So, so when we go back to reference, there's like this part that's called option. Um, and under that, there is something called simple factor, um, which, which lets us change the, the resolution of of the text, text to point. Um, so, so the syntax for that, we have to return to setup line 16. And what we have to do here is add a comma and add an open curly bracket. And let's just close it. <laughs> and also closing parentheses and a semicolon. So, what goes in between is the simple factor. 
and you would put a colon after that and I'm gonna put 0 0.1 for now Ooh, some arrow here oh so so what's really important to know um, after a simple factor you actually don't put in a semicolon I I just forgot because it's so natural for me to put semicolon after every line um, so so that's key right because like if you put semicolon here it assume that it's it's assume that that's the end of the statement and it doesn't see um, line 19 like the closing brackets so I'm gonna I'm gonna take that off there make sure that there's nothing behind that and I'm gonna play okay so nothing changes because the 0 0.1 value for simple factor simple factor is the default value so here um, what happens if we do 0 0.5 Ooh, so so you can see that now the the variable is changing um, what if we do 0 0.05 and that becomes a lot sparser right so so essentially you can plug in a variable in here and you know use use like key press or mouse to like control the amount of resolution when when you're thinking about like possibilities for designing a experimental or interactive text text so so here's something else that we can work with um so here we, we drew an ellipse what if i want to draw lines like what if i want lines to to sort of pop up almost like a cactus like all around my my text um, I'm going to comment that out for now and I'm gonna say line and I'm just gonna copy this so so line takes a x1 y1 and x2 y2 right so so what do I put for like the x2 y2 well it's really up to you um, I'm gonna do zero zero for now and just just to see how it looks like whoa so I get now I get these like, yeah, like lines, <laughs> lines that are shooting almost like a beam shooting from the corner to, to my text. Um, by the way, this like black text right here, that's not part of text to point. That's just the text that we drew as a starting point. Um, it's helpful to have that, you know, while you're working because it, it kind of serves as like a tracing pad and you kind of like make sure and know where you are, but I'm going to disable that for now. Okay. So once I disable that, it's it's almost impossible to see to read the high from from this this design. Um, so so what we could do is instead of um, having having the line you know uh, sort of get drawn from the corner to the text, we can we can transform we can translate the position of the canvas um, to to like match the X and Y like text to point array so what I mean by that is we can put translate here and we can put copy and paste that into it and from here I'm gonna do let's say minus 10 minus 10 10 10 okay so so what just happened is that i i have used plug the the high array x and high array y into translate so that there are what was it, like 28 like 28 different like translation of the canvas now and and we only see like we don't see the, the sh we've lost the shape completely and that's because translate is additive right so and since it's inside the for loop what that means is that it has translated you know additively and we can't see like most of the lines now because it's outside of the canvas so so what we can do here is using something called the push and a pop so if i do push add push here and add pop at the bottom and hit play then there you go like our, our lines are back um, because essentially every time it like reruns the for loop it it like 
it, it doesn't like the transit doesn't add on top of each other anymore. It just like returns to the original coordinate system and and come back and recreate um, the new 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 position for the coordinates. Cool. So so this is something that we have. We can you know you can change the stroke weight, um, make it like five or something. You can like really just like play around with this and see what happens. So, so for instance, I can also add a rotate here, right? Um, so I'm gonna go up to my global variable section and type and add a R, let R equal zero. And let's come, we can come back here and after translate add a rotate and put R into it and do R plus plus. And, and there. So, so what if I want to create an outline like that goes around the font instead of having like all these little shapes going around it? So, so one thing that is super useful inside P5 is something called begin shape and end shape. So if you go to look at the reference for begin shape, the way it works is that it essentially takes a group of vertices um, that each have an X and a Y value. And it, it basically just draw from point to point and combine it into whatever shape, you know, it, it like turns out to be once you connect all the dots. Very similar to connecting a dot game that I showed in the beginning. So, so we can actually borrow begin shape and end shape to help us with creating an outline around the text. So in order to do that, I'm going to delete this part right now. And what you'll have to do is creating a begin shape before the for loop and add your end shape after the for loop. Um, and here I would say vertex and high array dot x, high array dot y. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work. Great. <laughs> so so once we do that, um, you know, it, it essentially connect all the dots and turn it into a, a drawing of the text. And as you can see, um, the program doesn't distinguish like high and I as like separate letters. It, it like recognizes them as the same shape. So, so if you want high and I to be drawn separately, you would have to create two, two separate text to points for them. Um, the inside end shape, there's also an option to add close. And, and when you do that, it just closes the, the shape. So, so the last dot get reconnected to the first dot. And this is essentially like this letter is a little crooked and, and that, that has something that, that's related to our resolution, right? So if we, if we come back and change the resolution and increase it, it gets finer and, and the curve is more obvious. So this is it for the text to points basic tutorial. The next tutorial, I'm going to cover how to morph letters using text to points.